NZXT is a new Kraken series cooler, shipping 140, 240, and 280 millimeter sizes, and primarily differentiate themselves from the market with aesthetics. The coolers are accompanied by infinity mirrors and an RGB LED light pipe built on an Asetek Gen 5 pump with heavy customization by NZXT. This includes a custom built PCB internally and theoretical improvements to pump noise. Today we're looking at NZXT's X42, X52, and X62 liquid coolers versus competitors. We're testing in depth the thermals and the noise. But before getting to that, this content is brought to you by AMD FreeSync devices like the LG 34UM67-P ultrawide with FreeSync, which is actually affordable at $400. Link in the description below for more on that. The X42 is priced at $130. The X52, which is probably going to be the most popular unit, a 240 millimeter radiator, is priced at $150. And the X62 is $10 more at $160. So the price point is high, but it's really just their way of saying this is a new product and it's got the RGB LED pump plate and a Gen 5 cooler. The most comparable competition would be the H100 IV2 from Corsair. It's also a Gen 5 pump from Asetek as well, but it's less refined in terms of the electrical and NDXT had this whole PCB custom designed and built and they also have control over the firmware so they can issue firmware updates to their new coolers in the X two lines, so 62, 42, 52. So that's some level of validation for the price point, I suppose. We'll look at thermals and noise and see if that's any further reason to pay as much. The H100 IV2 is $105, so it is pretty competitive. It's been out for a little while at this point. And the difference between the X52, which is 240, and the H100 IV2, which is also 240, really stems from the custom electrical design, which Ace Tech hasn't previously allowed, and the LEDs and then NZXT also uses different fans, but we'll look at Corsairs and NZXTs and see whose is better. Starting off with the specs, the 120 millimeter fans spin up to about 2000 RPM with NZXT, Corsairs spin up to 2500 RPM, the 140 millimeter crack and cooler fans are specified for 1700 RPM max, more or less, and the pump speed sits at around 2600 to 2800 RPM with a variance of plus or minus 300 RPM unit to unit. This Asetek Gen 5 pump is controllable through CAM software, NZXT's solution, and if you'd like to reduce pump speed and fan speed independently from one another for better control over noise output, you could do that. Internally, the unit is pretty familiar to most Asetek cooling solutions. There's an in and out valve connected to barbs that have double elbow bends for posable tubing, rather than the tubing that juts out of the top of the Corsair unit, for example. And the tubes are made of the same permeation resistant rubber found in the previous Kraken coolers. It's got a braid now, so I guess that's somewhat similar to EVGA's Gen 4.5 coolers. Internal design uses the usual copper cold plate with micro fins to increase surface area through which propylene glycol flows to bring the heat up to an aluminum core radiator. And the only radiator on our bench that we're about to show without an aluminum core is the EK Predator 280. It's still pretty uncommon, and that uses a copper core, which we think might benefit EK and the Predator at the low end of fan RPMs. CAM allows the usual mix of breathing wave spectrum and custom LED colors split between the logo and the light pipe, and the cooler connects to the motherboard via USB 2.0 cable, so owners of mini ITX motherboards may have to buy a 3.0 to 2.0 adapter, and then connects to power via SATA. So these cables are modular, unlike the previous Kraken, and that's a nice touch for cable cleanliness. Cooler installation is the same as any other Asetek pump of the last two generations. X99 uses a set of four standoffs and then some cap nuts, which takes less than five minutes to install outside of a case. And 115X or AMD sockets use a back plate in addition to the other mounting hardware, so not too bad overall. Just make sure you do the installation prior to mounting the board in the case. Time to test this stuff. All the testing methodology, as always, is defined in the article review of these coolers in the link in the description below. That includes the overclock, the components used, CPU, fan RPMs, pump RPMs, all of that stuff, software used, and will probably answer any questions you have. Cooler test benches do take a good deal of validation to deploy properly. We've tested these multiple times and have a pretty good idea of our range of uncertainty between devices in terms of temperatures and noise. Also in the description in that link, if you're curious, and our noise testing parameters are defined there, including other components used during thermal validation versus noise validation, because we do use different components, some of which have passive cooling. Let's start with strictly head-to-head -head comparisons versus last generation. This chart shows only the X61, a popular cooler from last gen, 280 millimeters, versus the X62 from this current generation. The thermal difference alone, RPM to RPM, is actually somewhat substantial. 
NZXT has managed to reduce temperatures at a somewhat silent RPM of 1050 by roughly 5 degrees C from 42 to 37 C load. The high-end performance isn't as gapped with the X62 at 1700 RPM operating at 34.6 Celsius load while the X61 is at 36.9 Celsius load. Note that the X61 can run its fans at 2000 RPM if really desired where the X62 caps at 1700 so this is a change with the new generation. And here's a look at the noise results on a scatter plot for something a bit different. The X61 at 1050 RPM is approximately equal in noise output to the X62 at 1050 RPM also, with the newer cooler performing imperceptibly louder, but with a 5 Celsius temperature reduction in exchange for that 0.3 dB noise increase. So it's well worth the trade and can most likely be attributed to the Gen 5 Aztec pump and the new fans that NZXT is using, probably more so the fans. At 1700 RPM, noise levels for the X61 are around 51.4 dB, where the X62 is one tenth decibel higher at 51.5, with the two Celsius reduction in temperature. Not quite as good as the previous test, but we're at the high end of performance here anyway. That's a good start for the new coolers, but we need to compare them outside of a vacuum. This chart looks at a few more devices. We've introduced the Corsair H100i V2, the direct competitor, at three different RPMs. 2500, the max, 1500, a middle ground we're using for pretty much everything we're testing, and 1050 RPM for more of a silent setting. We've also introduced the NDXT Kraken X52, which is Again, that direct competition to Corsair's H100 IV2, it's the same size radiator, and that's at 2100 RPM, its own at max, and 1500 RPM for the middle ground, with two low RPM outputs of 800 and 400, and we've removed the X61 from this chart for ease of viewing. NZXT and Corsair use the same generation pump, but NZXT is as heavily customized, including that PCB customization I talked about, and NZXT can patch the firmware in the future. And Corsair's pump is basically a stock Aztec unit with some Corsair badging and SP120 fans that Corsair is designed in-house. The X62 naturally sits atop the charts, it's bigger surface area radiator and larger fans aid it in this regard. But Corsair's H100 IV2 sits just ahead of the Kraken X52, the direct competitor, which also costs a bit more, about $35, when comparing max RPMs. We'll get to noise in a moment, but the difference between the devices at their max RPM is approximately 1 Celsius, so not noticeable really, and bearing no impact on CPU performance in the real world. RPM for RPM, both devices at 1500, we see that the X52 is superior to the H100 IV2 by approximately 1C, again. So not really significant, but definitely measurable. As for the X52 with its lowest, quietest fan speed settings, 400 RPM is completely pointless. Don't set your fans this low. If we stop using delta values for a moment and add ambient back in, it reveals that the CPU temperature is nearly 95C with 400 RPM. They're really not moving air at all. Why NZXT allows a PWM signal to detect and output a fan speed that dangerously low is beyond me. It should be capped closer to 800 RPM. Even there though, we're getting a 75 to 77C output or 55.6 delta T, and the noise levels are at 30.2 dB. So that does make them unbeaten with our current lineup that we've listed, but again, you're at a higher temperature. So adding in dB for the rest of the devices to see which is truly superior, the dB accounted for, we now see the Corsair H100 IV2 at 1500 RPM is operating at the decibel level of 41.8, where the NDXT Kraken X52 is at 1500 RPM and runs at 42 dB. So there's a difference of 0.2. Again, not really significant or observable to the human ear, but if all that matters to you is cooling and noise and the LEDs and aesthetics are valueless, then the H100 IV2 is clearly a much cheaper option for those two metrics and performs about the same. But there's a better mix still if we ignore price temporarily. We're seeing the X62 at 1050 RPM operating with a lower temperature than any of these devices, excluding only the H100 IV2 at 2500 RPM or a borderline intolerable noise output of 53.9 dB. The X62 at 1050 RPM outputs 37.4 dB with a load temperature of 37C versus the H100 IV2 and X52 devices both at around 42 dB and 40 C for their 1500 RPM performance. Time to add more devices to the charts though, we're staggering them to keep it a bit legible. Here's a look at performance with the next competitor added, the EK Predator 280 XLC. Note that this $210 cooler is meant for creating semi-custom open loop slash closed loop liquid cooling. It's a bit unique in that regard. Uses quick release valves to couple with pre-filled water blocks for GPU cooling. 
in this scenario, we're only testing the Predator's CPU cooling ability and have not hooked up a GPU to the loop. EK is using a copper radiator that's fatter than its competition alongside two custom 140 millimeter fans. The Predator maxes out at 1400 RPM, but has a much lower bottom line of 600 RPM while still remaining under operable temperatures. The Predator also has the third best performance temperatures on the bench, only marginally behind the X62 from NZXT, though not exactly linearly comparable given the significantly higher price and more customizable loop formation. Still, at 35.92C, the Predator 280 is off to a good start. The Predator 280 is still able to impressively operate at 49.3 Celsius with a 600 RPM fan speed, which, if we move now to the noise chart, outputs 29.2 dB. The Predator at 600 RPM is the quietest on the bench while still remaining capable of cooling the CPU reasonably. Its 1400 RPM performance lands it at 41.4 dB or about the same volume as the Corsair H100 IV2 at 1500 RPM, but with 5 Celsius cooler performance on the EK Predator. It's also about 0.4 dB louder than the X62, again really not that noticeable at 1050 RPM, which is effectively equal in cooling performance overall. And finally, let's add all the devices to the charts. This new thermal chart adds the Be Quiet Dark Rock 3 at 2000 RPM for a look at a $50 air cooler's performance, but it also adds the X42 140mm Kraken series cooler. The X42 is able to keep up with the 240mm coolers only when maxing its RPM, which lands the 140mm device at 40.6C. The X52 is about 1C cooler with a 200 RPM reduction to fan speed, and also runs two fans, obviously, and a larger radiator, which helps. The X42 at 1050 RPM operates at 46.2C, really damn close to the H100 IV2 at 1050 RPM. And that's the bonus of a larger radiator and fan, though the price is unfortunately still higher than Corsair's cooler. If the X42 were priced below or around $100, it'd make a whole lot more sense as a product based on these results versus the Corsair offering. The thin is 9C cooler though than the Dark Rock 3 Air cooler if you wanted to have more of a baseline reference to sort of traditional options, and that costs $50 these days. This noise chart has undergone some culling, and we're looking at the nearest competitors. So the H100 IV2, the Kraken coolers, and just a few of the most relevant RPMs listed for each alongside the Dark Rock 3. The Be Quiet cooler sits at 55 Celsius load with a 37.7 dB at 2000 RPM, while the Kraken X42 at even just 1050 RPM sustains a 35 dB and 46.2 C output. Still, the X42 is readily beaten in noise and temperature, by the H100 IV2 and other Kraken products. So that was a huge amount of data. Hopefully it made sense when laid out like that, just sort of sequentially one to the next. Overall, what we're seeing is that the value proposition favors something like an H100 IV2 over the X42 right now, and that's purely on a price to performance level. On the other hand, the X62, the largest unit that we tested here other than the Predator, is looking like the best offering in terms of a mix of noise to performance because we can run it at 1050 RPM and still have some pretty low thermals along with obviously the reduced noise of running a more limited fan RPM. And of course at 1700 RPM it's unbeaten on the bench even by the Predator 280 XLC which is a really well designed and built radiator with a copper core and cold plate but it's just outperformed by the X62 at the higher RPMs. Now the X62 is $160, so $55 more than the H100 IV2, with most of that cost going to the RGB LEDs and the pump block. You basically have to ask yourself if you want to spend about $50 more on LEDs because that's the most dividing factor between the H100 IV2 and the X52 or X62. And the X52 performs at a good enough mixture of noise to performance, especially at 1500 RPM, that it's neck and neck with Corsair's H100 IV2. The X62, meanwhile, has performance favored over Corsair's H100 IV2, but the X52 is effectively tied other than aesthetics and other small value adds. So that's really what you're building your purchasing decision on if you're looking at a 240 RAD is, do I want the aesthetics and the modular cables in step with a higher price? The new Kraken series is a much needed refresh to the slow product cycle that NZXT seems to have been stuck in for about a year now. Cooling performance is better than the last generation, noise is about the same, and the RGB LED lighting effects are presently unmatched in the liquid cooling market. Just no one quite does it like NZXT does right now. 
The coin performance isn't good enough to justify a purchase on its own, given the price range again of $130 to $160, but it is if you want the LEDs. If not, there's really no point to buy the Kraken coolers over something like the H100 IV2, and it all really does come down to price with these. If NZXT ends up dropping their prices by maybe $10, max $15 per unit, they'd be pretty easy to recommend over Corsair's H100 IV2, even if the LEDs aren't the top of your priorities, but they're still kind of cool to have. Now, if LEDs are the top of your priorities, well, your choice is obviously made for you. These are the only things that do the LEDs on the pump plate quite like this. Really well done effects. Cam interacts, as far as lighting, pretty well with the pump and with the lighting effects that go on. So easy to use and set up in that regard. If cooling and noise are the top of your list, then you're basically left looking at H100 IV2 over something like the X42 or the X52 over the X42, because this, this is just an odd man out product. It's maybe okay if you have a really restrict, restrictive scenario where you have to fit a radiator that size in your case, but it is the outlier because it's at a price point where it feels like mm, just $20 more, you do end up with the X52, and that is significantly better, especially with regard to noise. You can keep your fan RPMs a bit lower, output slightly lower noise, and your temperatures will be minimally the same, but most of the time better, depending on what you're doing with your fans. So this one does make the least sense of the three. The X62 seems the best in terms of a mixture of noise and cooling performance. At 1050 RPM, you get a noise level that's really pretty much unheard, considering uh, other components in the system. And that's hard to get while also maintaining good cooling performance, which the X62 does and does well. So that's the one that is the most impressive to us anyway, and it is just $160. So you have to look at, do I want the LEDs and the performance? Uh, if you don't, and if a lower price is important, the H100 IV2 is a pretty good product still. Maybe slightly older, but it's still a Gen 5 pump. It ditches the RGB LEDs and therefore is cheaper. So that's what you have to work with. We've given you all the objective data. At this point, it's a subjective thing. Do you want LEDs or not? The NZXT products I do think are better designed, but they come with the cost, obviously. And EK's Predator, by the way, the 280XLC is a really cool device. I want to look at that more. We'll probably review it shortly properly with the GPU water block, but it's really not something that's meant to be used standalone. It's got the quick release for a reason. So that is all. As always, Patreon link the post drill video to help us out directly. Subscribe for more. Links in the description below. I'll see you all next time.